Hello, everybody. You know, April showers bring May flowers. What do May flowers bring? Well, at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, they don't bring either pilgrims or June bugs. Well, they may bring both. But they also bring spring and summer here. And our spring and summer is fun. Uh, we have all kinds of different opportunities for worship. We have all kinds of different ways that, that we go about doing our thing. If you wish to be a part of that, uh, we will still be online, but we also covet your response and, and your participation. If you want to come join us at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas, and we worship at 11 a.m., on Sundays. We're also going to be right here as we've always been. Uh, just be prepared for us to do some stuff maybe a little bit different as spring and summer comes along. If you wish to make a, uh, a donation, if you want to support us, because this ministry does come with a price tag, or if you want to send some comments, drop us a line, drop us a note to St. Paul's United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is 75902. We look forward to hearing from you. We will read your messages. We may not do anything, but we will read your messages. So I invite you to join us any way that you can for this spring and this summer. Go Fi Win. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He won't I still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense so I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would He fail now? He won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, he won't. Everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. And so I would he fail now. He won't, 
didn't blue, but my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, and I'm gonna make it through. Rain came when blue, and my house was built on you. And I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. Rain. on you Christ is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never let me down Faithful through generation, so I would he fail now. He won't, he won't, he won't fail. Tater. Hey. <laughs> What's wrong? Whatever do you mean? I mean, it seems like you might be upset about something. Oh, please. <laughs> or mad, maybe? You think I'm mad? Maybe. Darn right I'm mad. Settle down. No reason to use that kind of language. Settle down? I'll tell you when I'll settle down. When? When people stop making me mad, that's when! Arr! <sighs> what happened? It's that Charles character. Wait, I thought Charles was your friend. You thought WRONG! <laughs> I did? You did. I find Charles Despicable. <laughs> why? You know why? Didn't I just ask the question? Never mind. I'll tell you why. <laughs> he had the nerve to disagree with me. <gasps> no! <gasps> yes! Yes, he did. I can't believe it either. You know, I can't wait till I get to heaven so I won't have to put up with ignorant people. <laughs> so you're saying you get to decide who goes to heaven and who doesn't? Not exactly. But I know that bad people won't be there, so that leaves Chuckles in the hot spot. <laughs> <sighs> Tater, I don't know if you believe this, but you haven't always been the most, hmm, virtuous of people. 
What you talking about, Chip? It means you haven't always been the most nice guy. Oh, please. <laughs> when have I ever been naughty? Name two times. Well, you did use Susie's goldfish for bait. And I caught a big bass. Problem solved. <laughs> you switched your teacher's contact lens solution with super glue. Her contacts never slipped off her eye again, didn't they? You slashed the principal's tires. That was never proven. <laughs> Do you deny it? No comment. Okay, and don't forget the hey, time- Hey, 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 hey! I said two. <laughs> Fact is, none of us are perfect. We all need God's grace from time to time. So what you're hinting at is that they may be more people in heaven than we think. I hope so. I hope it's a big tent where there's lots of people that are welcome, even those who may not have always been nice, a place where even you will be welcome. Yeah. Hey! So let's pray. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Help us forgive others. Help us forgive others. As you forgive us. As you forgive us. Amen. Amen. Hey, remember the time I put that mouse in that weird kid's lunch? Uh, I don't. When was that? Uh, and never mind. By the way, don't open your lunch. <laughs> Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win, amen. We're still in the season of Easter, and this is when we officially celebrate the rising of the dead uh, from the dead of Jesus. Oh, who am I kidding? We celebrate the rising from the dead of Jesus every day, or we should. And, you know, we like to say that we are an Easter people, that we're inspired, if not driven, by the faith that Jesus was resurrected and Jesus will come again. And this does require faith. It also requires that we don't live in fear or in disbelief. You know, our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, the 24th chapter, and I'll read verses 1 through 14. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood uh, on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As, as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped out into the water. The other disciples followed along in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have some breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Now this was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, this is referred to as Jesus and the miraculous catch. I, I never knew Jesus played football. But there's your proof. Well, maybe not really. So... But what is the context of today's passage? If it's not football, if it's not basketball or baseball, well, this is at the 
pretty close to the very end of John's gospel. Jesus has already, of course, been crucified and risen. He's appeared to Mary at the tomb. Then there's the disciples, except for Thomas. And then again to the 11 remaining disciples, including Thomas. But then he stopped coming around and the disciples went fishing. And it's easy for us to throw the disciples under the bus for being so flaky. They had seen the risen Lord twice, <laughs> yet they still weren't sold. You know, part of it may have been that they got bored. Honestly, what did Jesus want them to do? Just hang around and wait, wait, wait. They had not been given specific instructions. Uh, perhaps they were still a tad bit afraid. You know, they had seen some really nasty things that happened to Jesus, uh, you know, before, during, and after crucifixion. Uh, maybe they went home to go fish because they thought Jerusalem was still too hot for them to be hanging around. You know, maybe other people were just making fun of them for just hanging around waiting for another appearance, and the peer pressure was getting too strong for them. There's a bunch of different theories. There's a bunch of different thoughts. I, I, I had a Bible teacher that, that had one that I really liked. Dr. Star Bowen is a biblical scholar that has kind of a slightly different take on the story. You know, Dr. Bowen uh, has this strange and exotic belief. I want to tell you about Dr. Bowen. Uh, he is a Bible scholar. He grew up out in West Texas. He grew up out in San Angelo, and he still acts like a cowboy. You can tell he's from West Texas, no matter what. He has, he has those mannerisms, he has those, those, those things, and yet he was uh, educated in some of the better schools, and then he went and did his doctoral work in Edinburgh in Scotland, in the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, and then uh, most of his career, is, he's, he's been going around uh, the Mediterranean and then down into, into uh, uh, Israel, Jerusalem itself. He is very highly thought of. Now, I took a Bible history class from him, and he had this reputation. Uh, he was very smart, but he was a hard grader. Y'all know what that is? That means he just doesn't give A's. You know, he, he tends to be uh, just hard when, you, when you're writing out papers and turn them in. He's one of these that likes to take a red marker and cut things up and just go wrong, wrong, wrong. You know, he can be pretty pretty devious with that. Uh, if, you, if you try, you will pass, but he just does not give any A's. In, in my course of study, I've never made anything below an A. So I was aware of that. I knew of his reputation, right? So uh, I went online to see, you know, what are the things that make him tick? What are the things that, that he may really be looking for? Because I'm a pretty good writer, and I know that you write for your audience. I get that. I understand that. There are people that, that, that want certain things, and, you know, you can see where their tilt is. And so that's, that's what you write for. That's how you write it. So I, I, I Google him. And the first thing that comes up is an article in the Texas Monthly. Yeah, international publication, big time publication. He has this huge article. And it's not about Bible history. It's, he's a master boat builder. He builds wooden boats. He has a waiting list of like decades for people to get a Bowen boat. You know, and he, he's somewhere out in rural northeast Texas, and all these people are lined up, and he's, he's one of the best in the world. I was going, huh, that's interesting. Let me see, you know, if, if I can find anything a little bit more religious. You know, let's put that in the back of the, the mind. And it did come out uh, to help a little bit, because he, Dr. Bowen believes that Peter and the rest were just worn out. Their faith had gone. It had a good three years. They saw some amazing things, but things had changed. And it was time for them to go back to their profession and to get in with life. And he, he will tell you that Peter and his father were first generation boat fishermen. Why? Because that's when fishing in boats started in the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Galilee, whatever you call it, because it's freshwater. Uh, before then, they, there was just no material. So they literally had to ship things by camel or horse or whatever from the Mediterranean 
overland into the Sea of Galilee. Some people say that they actually took boats apart, shipped them over, and then, and then reassembled them. And then they started fishing. And, and Peter and his father were, so, were the first generation doing this. But that gave them a huge advantage because the other people were fishing from the bank and they could go out and fish in the, in the, the lake. So they were doing pretty well. And that's one of the things that when he originally walked away from his job, when Jesus said, come and follow me, I'll make you fish for some men, it took some stuff because he was, he was flourishing in this trade. So that's where they went back to fish. And, and Dr. Bowen thinks that he gave up and went back to fish. Now, that is what they were doing before Jesus came. Now Jesus was gone. And that's what they were going to be doing for the rest of their life. You know, my question is, do you ever get worn out? Do you ever just get so tired and exhausted? You know, we've seen some amazing things in this congregation. But things have changed. Our world is telling us to move on, to maybe do things back into a secular world, to, to start bringing our faith more to a secular faith. Things are too difficult to manage right now. So let's just give up. This faith stuff just isn't working. It was fun while it lasted, but let's move on. So the disciples were back on the water, right? They were fishing, but they weren't having much luck. Someone on the bank says, throw your nets over here. Really? Is this person a pro? Is this person the fishing guide? Is this somebody that, that, that knows? It's just, you know, it's just this dude on the beach saying, hey, why don't you throw it over there? I find it kind of odd that they did what the person asked. You know, that is really something because this is their job, and, and, they're, and this guy's just some yahoo on the beach. But I guess they thought, well, nothing else has worked, so let's you know, give it a try. And they did, and they caught lots of fish. Then John, who's the disciple that Jesus loved, and you know that he's got it on a T-shirt somewhere, right? Disciple Jesus loved. And a little, little arrow pointed straight up. And then and, you know, John recognized Jesus and says, hey, I think that's the Lord. And then Peter goes overboard. Literally, you know, uh, he, he puts clothes on. We're not even discuss that right now. He puts clothes on, jumps overboard, and, and swims to the shore. Uh, and then they had a meal with Jesus. And this is kind of sort of very important. He showed that this showed by him eating and drinking with them that he wasn't a ghost. Now, I'm not some ghoul expert. I'm not an expert on, on, on spirits and such, so don't ask. Just believe me when I tell you this, that he, when he's going through the, the process of eating bread, eating fish, drinking whatever he's drinking, that this shows that he actually was human, that he had been risen from the dead. <sighs> Pretty exciting. And it got them all fired up, and they were able to do the things that they were needing to do. My question for all of us is what's it going to take to get us excited again? What will it take to get us excited again? What will it take for us to have faith and throw our nets out, even if we hadn't been successful? What will it take for us to really show faith over fear? That's a nice little slogan, but we're doing it all wrong. If we have faith, then we should go out and be doing the things that Jesus asks us to do. We should be feeding the hungry, we should be taking care of the sick, and we should be visiting those that need to be visited. Yeah, you know, we should not be afraid to do any of that. We should not let peer pressure get in our way. We're in a really wild place right now as a congregation, as a denomination, as a country. I truly believe that Jesus is calling us to throw out our nets to seek and to show. You know, this is actually one of those times in our lives where we can see obstacles in our world just as the disciples saw the obstacles that were in their world. The context is pretty similar. Maybe, just maybe, we need to go overboard with Jesus. Go fight, win, amen. 
That concludes our online worship experience here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. It's a little different. If you want to uh, worship with us in a live setting, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, we're located at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's basically the South Loop and Hank Street. We would love for you to come and worship with us. If you want to send us an offering, uh, send it to P.O. Box 921 Lufkin, Texas 75904. There is nothing too small or too large that we cannot use to uh, show Christ's love to our world. Until next time, go fight win. Amen. Hey, Tater, have a nice lunch. Oh, thanks. I, I thought, oh, mouse! Ah! <laughs>